Hi there, my name's Andy Sykes, otherwise known as Hexjibber. I'm a award-winning animator and I also teach flash animation in universities and colleges here in the UK. This is my website, hexjibber.com, and uh, here's the lesson. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on using bones with symbols. You can see that I've uh, made a dude here on a layer called dude. With just one keyframe in it, you can see that my dude is made up of lots of different symbols. These are all graphic symbols. You can use movie clips if you want, but what graphics enable you to do is change the frame of the graphic that's being displayed. So you could have a hand that was a fist, and then in a different frame, it could be open or it could be giving the thumbs up. And it just gives you a bit more versatility in the type of animation you do. So it's a load of graphic symbols on one layer in one keyframe. I haven't separated it like I did with the shapes because it's not necessary. I've given them a neck and uh, both a sort of belly and a torso. The more bits that you can split your character up into, the better um, bones will work uh, with this particular example. Uh, with symbols, it makes an armature of your character that acts quite a lot like a maquette or a doll. It doesn't deform the shapes like it does when you use shapes, which you can see in my previous lessons. But let's get started. I'll move over here to my bone tool. and I'm gonna start off in the sort of abdomen and I'm gonna start off right in the middle. This is where I want all my other points to pivot from. And depending on what sort of creature you're making a person or a animal of some kind, this is really up to you. But this is essentially where all my different bits are gonna pivot from. So I'm gonna start and draw a line up to the center of my chest. And then I'm gonna draw another bone up to the neck and then up to the head. And I'm gonna draw my legs off my center point as well. So there we go. I'm gonna draw to the join there down here. So you can see this is already beginning to look a little bit like a human skeleton and that's exactly what you should think of these bones as if you're making a human. Okay I'm going to draw another point to my right leg down to the join then to the foot. You don't need to extend uh, another bone into the foot because the foot will just pivot around this point here. Okay, next up I'm going to draw to the shoulder from this point here. You see it makes more sense for the shoulder to pivot from this point here than the abdomen. I'm going to stretch out another bone to the elbow and to the wrist. Again, your hand will pivot from the wrist so you don't need to create another bone going to the end of the hand. I'm going to do the same on the other side. There we go. So we're ready to start refining our skeleton a bit. You see that I can move the head around there. I'm going to try moving one of the arms around and see what happens. You can see that I can move it up there, that's good. But what happens when I move it down here? That's not quite right, is it? <laughs> we don't have our hands uh, coming out of the centre of our bodies like that. So I think I'm going to constrain this join here. At the moment, it's got rotation enabled, you can see here. So I'm just gonna untick that and see what happens. So I've actually turned off rotation on this joint entirely. Let's see what happens now. You can see that it's rotating from this point only, not this point here that we've uh, disabled the rotation on. And you can see that that happens for this arm as well that can't go floating around and he can you know start doing YMCA and dancing and doing all kinds of things if he wants equally let's see we can do the same with the legs we really only want them to pivot from this point here so let's disable this one there we go we can start moving our legs around having all kinds of fun with that And the animation works exactly the same as it would do with shapes. And you can use the same spring effects and adjust the strength and the dampening. 
But you can see this is a really easy way to start getting a character moving around and you can refine the amount that you want to constrain the rotation, say, of the head. And you can also constrain, if I just click on one of these bones, the amount it's allowed to slide along the x-axis and on the y-axis. So if you want to limit the amount that it can move, you have controls for that here in a joint Y translation and joint X translation. If you didn't want to use uh, your own drawings within Flash, this is a great technique for use with photographs. So if you've got a photograph of a person and split it down into chest, abdomen, top of leg, bottom of leg, foot, head, neck, etc., then you could use this as a way of making a photographic maquette of your character. Hello. So there you go. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, if you've enjoyed this lesson, why not consider checking out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can also buy my book, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book. You can buy it in the UK, US, Germany, France, Japan, from Amazon and other good stores.